everyone can change the world. Yes, even you. But it takes a tremendous amount of courage to accomplish such change in a stubborn and unwilling society. However, the members of Students for a Democratic Society, or SDS, made this change, and their impact will be remembered to this day. The 1960s was a time of radical change in the United States, with African Americans, women, Latinos, and many others fighting for a better society, better in one way or another. Now, being a student means learning a lot about the world and its people, but with high tensions with the Soviet Union and bad political or economic actions of the US, many students realized that their lives were being impacted by such factors that they had no control over. According to the Columbia Encyclopedia, it was this feeling of being subject to power which led to the fight for a participatory democracy, or society in which students can decide on factors that affect their lives. After several small protests for this participatory democracy, fewer than a hundred people gathered at Port Huron, Michigan, leading to the construction of the Port Huron Statement in June of 1962, made available to the public by the 60s Project. This manifesto begins with the words, We are people of this generation, bred in at least modest comfort, housed now in universities, looking uncomfortably to the world we inherit. The members of this newly formed Students for a Democratic Society saw the world as corrupted and refused to live in a society with morals that included such corruption. From this point on, SDS became a leading component of the new left during the 1960s, which chose not to accept what society valued as morally correct, such as fighting and civil rights restrictions. However, it was not until 1965 that the power of SDS took off. According to the Oxford Companion to American Military History, with U.S. entrance into the Vietnam War having nothing to do with the U.S., new leftists became furious. Not only was the U.S. fighting a war which only meant to push the boundaries of communism and imperialism, and thus more chaos, but also the mass amount of death and tragedy in the war led people of SDS and the new left to determine that it was not a good part of their society. And so on April 17, 1965, members of SDS marched in Washington, D.C., fighting against the Vietnam War, demanding that they, quote, bring their boys home, end quote. Students for a Democratic Society continued its fight against socially accepted ideals, which impeded upon society's peace. They continued to try and change the policies of war, of racism, and any other large offense. The group seemed to become much more radical from the state start of the U.S. entrance into the Vietnam War, according to the Dictionary of American History. And although the goals of the group shifted from a participatory democracy to anti-war protests and resistance, many young people were still motivated to join in the fight, increasing rapidly in number by 1968. SDS and the New Left itself began to have a large impact, spreading ideas of social revolution throughout the world in places such as France, Czechoslovakia, and Poland, shown by Jeff Bailey's account on the International Socialist Review. The SDS succeeded in changing people's stubborn view about the world by revealing that change is a possibility. About three weeks after Martin Luther King's assassination, 700 to 1,000 students joined in protest at Columbia University in protest of universities' relationships with the Pentagon, having racist ideals, and the military. Soon after the protest started, about five days later, police violently pushed the protesters out from the campuses. Although hatred of the SDS was present before the event occurred, it still spread mass controversy over the SDS and its message to young people. On January 15, 1969, a letter shown publicly by Anarchist magazine was written to the left by Murray Bookchin, explaining how the left all around the world dragged society down and, quote, betrayed the students and workers to the system, end quote. Ideas such as this split society in either appreciating change or mocking rebellion. This split soon became present in the SDS itself. In June of 1969, according to The Independent, at an SDS convention, the group became split into factions, one of which being called the Weathermen. This faction sought rebellion in violent ways, such as seeking peace in the worldwide community by applying force to the world, giving the students for a democratic society a bad misrepresentation. It was because of this that the SDS fell apart from 1969 to the mid-70s. Mid However, the legacy of SDS was still remembered, not only throughout other countries, but in the U.S., including Nixon's retreat from the Vietnam War and the lessening of segregation throughout the 60s. The SDS was remembered for both their youth and their number of believers, according to Billy Maines in his article about the SDS, The Second Coming on Orlando Weekly.
This legacy has occurred to today, as the SDS seems to be coming alive again, reflecting on past efforts to work toward new ones. In this century, many students have been fighting for equal opportunities for college tuition and fighting against wars such as Afghanistan. And all the while, people are still pushing against this SDS power. Overall, however, the SDS accomplished its goal in carrying the message, we can fix the world and all its imperfections.